Right, hello everybody, it's 314 React here, and today we are looking at Cyberpunk with my new PC. Recently just upgraded to a Ryzen 7000 series, a 7700X, 32 gigs of DDR5, and a couple of NVMe drives, and I am still using my 3090. So previously I would have been CPU limited on this game, now I am definitely GPU limited. You can see we're running about 32 FPS. Before the game would vary, it would sometimes go down to about 20 FPS and the CPU usage would be very, very high. But now it seems to say 2% CPU usage here, as you can see in the top right. That's uh, quite an upgrade and the game does feel much more smoother in terms of frame times and handling, even though it is at 30 FPS. Now the reason why it's at 30 FPS is because I have every single graphics option absolutely maxed out. I've got DLSS on, but I've also got ray tracing on at psycho levels. So it's pretty heavy duty, even for a 3090. Hopefully I'm going to be able to get 4090 in the next month or so. And we should be up to 60 FPS at that point. But for now, we are at 30 FPS. But like I say, it's a lot more bearable because the CPU times are a lot more consistent now. Don't know what that noise is all about. Oh, someone's in a gunfight. Let's go join it. So it's been a while since I played Cyberpunk. There's been quite a few updates since. Uh, so I do need to get back into it at some point. Whoa, okay. Thing's still there. Quite a bit going on and it's still 30 FPS. So it seems to be pretty consistently 30 FPS. So I need to ideally start a new game on this at some point. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Although I still think it's missing a lot of content. It definitely needs a lot more role-playing elements to it and possibly an alternate start. Hopefully the models will be able to do that. There are some mods that I want to try with this and I will be doing a video on those soon because I've been trying some of the flying car mods and the monorail uh, re-adding mod, a few other things. And there's a few more I want to try from Nexus. I've been building the PC and installing games and testing on it. So I'm a little bit tired at the moment. So this video is probably going to be a bit short and a bit rambly. Because my old CPU was a Core i7-6700K. So quad core, 8 threads. Whereas this is an 8 core, 16 thread. Way more advanced. Won't be hampered by all the performance limitations that they had to add in because of all the weird CPU bugs that there were like Spectre and stuff like that. They had to seriously impact the CPU's performance. I think I remember that a few years ago. So not only was it old, but its performance has been hampered by things like that. Here we are with a brand new CPU. Came out just a few days ago and it's amazing. And also I've got no mounted hard drives or anything. So there's no hard drives, there's no SSDs. It's just two NVMe drives directly attached to the motherboard. And it is amazing. So much tighter in the case and whoa and it runs amazingly fast. Like Cyberpunk now takes about six seconds to load a game, which is nuts because it used to take quite a while when I had it installed on a hard drive. God, yeah, everything is a lot easier. Like even driving is a lot easier. I mean, that could be because of the updates to the game as well, but it's also because that frame rate is a lot more consistent. It's no longer dipping out to, I think it sometimes hit the teens at some point when it got really busy. So. Whoop, whoop, oh my God, oh boy. Oh, Jesus. I still don't think you have garages. For what the hell? I still don't think you have garages for your cars or anything like that, but hopefully they add that in at some point. Like I said, it just needs a lot more role-playing elements. What happened here? Hopefully the police are less useless now. Oh, police are bothered about that. Oh my god! Okay, that's new. That looks new. Oh boy! I don't remember seeing those robots before. Oh no. Oh no! What in? Okay. Okay, so that was new. Jumping out of the car. I don't remember that. I use a controller for when driving and then for the rest of the game I use keyboard and mouse. So let's bring up the map. Can we go to V's apartment? There's also a mod that allows for being able to see where you're supposed to be going on the road rather than just in the little mini map which I have covered by the <laughs> performance statistics there. Not a good idea to place it there but oh well we can still find our way there. Uh, shortcut? No, that's not a shortcut. 
just a dead body lying in the middle of the air. Wow. To be fair, there's a few bugs when I first started playing this that's still in the game. Like, just outside of Night City, there's a car wedged in the ground that's just never going to move anywhere. Whoops. Like, no matter what patches happen, that car is still there. Probably another good reason to start a whole new game. But then I'd love an alternate start mod. I'd love more options for customization and cyberware and stuff. Like, where, where's the ability to have metal skin and things like that and to modify all your cyberware? I also had a mod that made it rain more as well. I need to try that a bit more. Out the way, out the way. Now, this area was quite CPU limited, I remember. Quite high CPU usage. Frame rate was a bit all over the place. Ooh, down to 29 frames there, but still, CPU usage is very low. Really low. So I don't know if that's a error with Windows Game Bar reporting the CPU usage wrong. Let's see here, there's quite a bit of usage across the cores, so I think there might be a lot more utilization than what the Game Bar is saying. I'm not sure why that is, but it's very interesting. Then again here it says that... <laughs> The Epic Games Launcher is using quite a bit of CPU as well while downloading something, so that's annoying. It's still a lot lower than the CPU usage was on my Core i7, so either way, it's a ton better. And yeah, let's, let's do an example of loading. So let's quit out to the main menu. Let's do this all in real time. Seems like it's actually taking longer to load back to the main menu than it did to load a game, which is quite funny. Right, here we go, main menu. So if we just click continue. And there we go, like a few seconds to load. Awesome. That used to take quite a while on my old PC, where I was admittedly running this from a hard drive, but... Damn, that was like six or seven seconds there. <laughs> Finally, my 3090 has been allowed to breathe fully. Although, ironically, in a month or so, it could be redundant. The Ryzen 7700X is a really nice CPU. It does tend to run a bit hot. It can get up to 95 degrees when it's under heavy load. It's a lot of good single core performance. The multi core performance is really good. It's going to be amazing for editing and rendering this video, like so much better. Probably like four or five times faster at rendering video than my old CPU was. And it plays games a lot better as well. Watch Dogs Legion is another game that runs a hell of a lot better. Because that also reached CPU limitations as well. There are areas in that where my CPU reached 100% I'm fairly certain. So that wasn't good. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a benchmark. Average FPS of 31, minimum FPS of 22. So let's put the graphics on to low and fire up the game. And now we're running at 98 FPS. V-Sync off, 128 FPS. This is where we're going to be trying to get the most out of the CPU. Let's go to that busy area again. So yeah, this is low settings, so potato setting. But still at 4K because I want to keep this video recorded at 4K. Is this what it looked like on PS4 and Xbox One? 100 FPS, 95 FPS. See, so yeah, I think this is the CPU limited area, and even with the graphics settings down, which means the GPU is processing things faster and requesting more information from the CPU, thus putting more pressure on the CPU, and it's still running pretty damn smooth. Let's see if DLSS is on. So we put DLSS on quality, that 
should make things run easier for the... Oh my god, how much better does that look? Even just DLSS on at low settings. Hmm. 83 FPS. So turning DLSS on at low settings actually reduces your FPS? How does that work? Oh, no, 67 FPS. How the hell was I getting 90 here earlier then? Um, I think the area's gotten a lot more busy. Look at all these NPCs that were just shown up. 69 FPS there. <laughs> and let's crank everything back up. Back. And we're back down to 31 FPS. Yeah, there we go. Basically, the CPU is able to run this area at about 60, 70 FPS when there's lots of people around, and the GPU is what's holding it back. So, the GPU, for the most part, should now be the limiting factor in my setup. Because, yeah, this area before, you could definitely feel the CPU lag, and the low FPS was pretty bad, especially in combat as well. That doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. My god, look at all these people. Whoa! Oh my god. Oh boy, oh boy, out of the way. So yeah, with the 4090 and DLSS 3, I think using the new crazy technology they're using in the 4090s, it should boost me up here to about 60 FPS, I imagine. And in some of the more empty areas where I get about 40 FPS, probably gets me up to about 80. Really want to get my hands on a 4090. I'm tempted not to buy it though, because of Nvidia's ridiculous pricing and stuff like that, and maybe wait for an Intel or an AMD solution, but DLSS 3 is just, it's too tempting, it really is, so I will hopefully be getting that soon, and hopefully be cranking a video out on that. So another thing I've noticed as well, there's no hitching or stopping as it's loading stuff. Another thing I used to get when running from a hard drive, that was quite infuriating, yeah, every now and then it would just stop, lag a little bit. Dying Light 2 is another game I need to try as well, because that was heavily GPU limited, but there were areas with lots and lots of zombies where I'm fairly certain it was hitting some CPU issues, so that'd be another good one to try out. But I think next week I will do a on the Flying Car mod for this, Extra Rain mod. If you like this video, please drop a like. Let me know if you've got a new Ryzen CPU and how it's getting on for you. Let me know what temperatures you get. I think I might need to upgrade my cooler. I've got a Noctua with a couple of fans on it. I'm fairly certain I've installed it right, but uh, it still runs pretty hot. But then again, the Ryzen's are meant to run it up to 95 degrees kind of makes sense my laptop also has a ryzen that runs pretty hot as well also let me know if you're going to be getting a 4090 are you excited about the amd graphics cards the intel graphics cards do drop a subscribe there's always gaming and tech videos coming out from me usually they're a lot better than this and i will see you in the next video